So once again, good morning. My name is Mary Carpenter. I'm one of the librarians at Santa Monica College. And today we're going to do a, a workshop on research methods where I'll discuss the various types of information, how to locate and access information sources, ways to help you decide on a research topic, discovering book and article resources, evaluating resources, citation, and other parts of your research. Um, and because I'm doing this workshop on my own, if you have any questions, go ahead and use the chat feature. I'll do my best to monitor it. But if not, um, save your questions for along the way. So I want to start from the SMC homepage so that we can find the library. From the homepage, get rid of that green thing, we're going to go to student support and find the library, which is in between counseling and tutoring. And before I really get into the research process, I just want to take a little drive around the library page because there's a lot of useful information here that you'll need when you're doing your research. The first thing that you'll notice is the Ask a Librarian widget that just popped out from the right side of the page. When you use the chat service, you will talk live either with an SMC librarian during what would be normal hours the library is open if we were on campus, or you'll get a librarian from a college or university that is part of the international consortium that we belong to. This chat service is 24-7 research help. So if you get stuck, any time, day or night, librarians are available to help you get unstuck. And you can see you have two choices. It says either chat now or no thanks. I'm just gonna say no thanks because we're gonna talk about that later. We'll scroll down past the library where we would be if we were in normal times. By the way, I want you to notice we have Pearl the Bluebird this is not the same thing as chatting with the librarians. This is a frequently asked questions platform provided by the college and it answers various questions regarding application or enrollment, financial aid and other services provided by SMC. So this is not the same thing as library chat. I want to take your attention to these boxes on the library page. The main one here is called OneSearch, and this box allows you to search everything the SMC library owns or subscribes to. Currently, since we are not on campus at the library, OneSearch has an automatic default for searching only online resources. This means you don't have to tell the system to search only online accessible items, it will do it for you. And OneSearch finds ebooks, periodicals, newspapers, and other materials all at the same time but there is an advanced option for searching books and articles separately instead of together. So just for the sake of putting in um, a topic, let's put in horror literature because apparently I searched that before and we'll hit search. I just want you to see what the catalog looks like. And notice here it says online access. That's what I was mentioning before that it, the system automatically defaults to searching online for you so you don't have to tell it to, okay? I'm gonna leave this. To leave the catalog, I can go back to library or I can go to library home either way. Back on the library homepage, we have some blue links. The first blue link, search library resources, is simply a duplicate link of this one search box above it we have a backup link in case one or the other one isn't working. So again, just to show you, it takes you into the library catalog. The next link takes you to the databases. Here, you're going to find a list of all the databases that we subscribe to, and it's alphabetically by title of the database with a short description of the content within. I think we have about 40 databases. And again, they're listed alphabetically. We also have the databases grouped by particular themes such as business resources or social sciences. But I want you to realize that clicking on a theme doesn't mean that it will search all the databases listed underneath that theme at the same time. 
Okay, they're just listed there for you to choose from should you need to search in that particular area. And we're going to visit a few of these databases in depth in a moment. By the way, to access the materials in the SMC library databases, you need to be currently enrolled and you simply use the, the same username and password login information that you would use to access your Canvas platform. So remember for your username, you don't include the email extension smc.edu. You just use your last name, underscore, first name. So returning to the library homepage, we see research guides. These guides were created by SMC librarians and they can assist you with a variety of topics. They're listed alphabetically and they can be subject specific like chemistry or dance or fashion and merchandising. They can be more general. We have a frequently asked questions libguide and we also have one that's pertinent to our subject today called introduction to research. And they can also cover more current topics like COVID-19. Back on the library homepage, we have another link called workshops and videos. Typically in the spring and fall semesters, the library performs free hourly workshops on a variety of topics like the one you're doing today on research methods. We also have topics like fake news, evaluating websites for research, MLA works cited. All students are welcome to attend the live Zoom workshops. And if you can't attend, we will post the workshops on this page once they are completed. Also, the library has its own YouTube channel. I'm on the library page again, and I'm going to scroll down to resources. <laughs> Click on YouTube channel, and this is where we keep a short list of videos that are useful for understanding how to search some of our library databases and our catalog. So for example, we have the Oxford English Dictionary, Oxford Art Online, ERIC, which is an educational database, eBooks, which we'll touch on a little bit today, Medline, which is for health research, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's under resources on the library homepage. Back on the library homepage, we have uh, tutoring services, which is peer tutoring at SMC. So if you click on this, you can go and sign up for Zoom tutoring with some of your peers in all sorts of subjects if you need particular help. And the final blue link we have is called Ask a Librarian. This again is the same thing as that chat service that popped out here called Ask Us. This is simply a duplicate link. So when you click on, click on this, you get that 24 seven live research help. You're also gonna see the chat box sprinkled throughout the library website. It'll be in other areas, including the databases. So it's always kind of in your face as a reminder to ask for help. You don't have to put your name. You can just simply type your question with regards to research and hit chat and you'll get somebody right away. There's a lot of other useful links on the library homepage. I just wanna point out a few before we get into the research, but some of these links are very essential to doing your research. Starting on the left side of the blue links under doing research, you'll see another link to the library online catalog. We really give you <laughs> lots of links here so that in case any of the links get broken, you have another way to get into it. So this is again, a duplicate link to the catalog. And the same thing with the library databases. It's just another link in case this one isn't working. Research topics, we're going to get in depth in this in a moment, but research topics takes you to, and I'm glad this happened because this is exactly what you'll need when you log into the databases for the day. This is the page that asks you for the username and password. Okay. And when you're doing research throughout the day, typically I find this only asks me one time, meaning if I switch databases, it shouldn't ask you for your login information again. Um, only if you've probably been logged out for a particular length of time, will it ask for this again. So this is what the screen looks like. I'm going to hit login. 
because I've already entered my information. And it brings me to the opposing viewpoints database. This is a really good place to talk uh, to visit if you need to write a research paper and you don't yet have a topic. It's a very helpful database for identifying topics from current social issues and controversies, but by no means is this a one-stop shop. You're going to want to use this in conjunction with other databases, but it's a good place to start. And we are going to look at this in depth in, in just a moment. Back on the library page, I want to finish out these links. We have something called Introduction to Research, and this is one of the LibGuides that I mentioned a moment ago in the Research Guides. This is really good for research because it kind of gives you an assembly line type of thinking when you're doing your research from choosing a topic to how to start uh, thinking about writing your paper. Um, it shows you how to access articles and books gives you tips on using web resources and how to evaluate those web resources. Um, and just as importantly, it gives you information on citing the information, citing the resources that you might use in your paper. Uh, typically, you'll use either APA or MLA uh, style guides in college. And so this introduction to research LibGuide has a lot of information pertinent to doing your research. And finally, back on the library homepage, there's one more link that's very useful for research, and that is the citation style guidelines. Again, when you click on that, it takes you to several links that are helpful for the MLA or APA formatting and style guides. Typically, you'll use MLA, which is also called Modern Language Association, for your English classes or your humanities classes. And you'll use APA, which is the American Psychological Association style. That's more often used for the sciences. And right now, MLA is currently in its eighth edition, and APA is in the seventh. So that's all listed under the library page. I'm going to pause for just a moment to see if anyone has any questions. I think I have you muted, but you're welcome to use chat. And if not, we'll... We'll just keep on keeping on. So let me go back to the, uh, let me go to the library homepage. Okay, so let's get a little bit more into how to do research. When you're doing research, it's often a very fluid and evolving process, but there are steps that you can take to move along in more of a somewhat of a linear fashion. Um, you know, basically some of the steps are you wanna choose your topic, you wanna create some search terms, find your books, your articles, um, take your notes, start writing your paper, um, cite those sources that you use, right? Um, and one thing too, I'm gonna put myself back on camera so I can talk. One thing that you want to do or what I like to do when I do research is say that your instructor gives you uh, a paper and they say, okay, Mary, I want you to choose five topics or five uh, sources for your paper. What I would like to do is double down on that because when you're doing your research, um, again, it's always fluid and evolving and you might decide to change directions in the middle of your research. So if an instructor says, I want you to find five sources, I would try to find 10, okay? Because you might change directions. Another thing when you're doing your research that I like to do, once I've figured out my topic and I'm looking for the sources that I have to find, my articles, my books, my web resources, I like to do the research part or searching part first because in by itself, that's a lot to deal with. You're figuring out your topic and what search terms you're using. You're getting familiar with databases and eBooks and, and, and figuring out what your topic is gonna be. You might broaden or narrow that topic. And so that process by itself is kind of a lot to handle. So I like to do that first and then take a break as long, you know, as long as you need to a day, a couple hours, go to a movie, whatever, when we can go back to movies. And then I come back and I start to look through the information and process and assimilate it for purposes of writing the paper. So that's my kind of two-step thing. Look for the stuff first and again, double down on as many resources as you're being asked to find. Take a break, let your brain process that, 
and then start the research part because that's that's a whole lot of uh, information when you have to comprehend and assimilate that information. So that's just a suggestion. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? Um, I'm going to stop sharing again and take you back into some of the databases that I want to show you. Let me get rid of myself. Stop video. Okay. So a moment ago I said um, there's a really good database for finding a research topic if you don't have one. And again, that one is called Opposing Viewpoints. So I want to go back in and talk about this for just a moment. <clears throat> The Opposing Viewpoints database, this is really, this was processed from a lot of books on pro con subjects. So this gives you pros and cons of a particular topic. There are about, I think upwards of almost 500 different topics in the Opposing Viewpoints database. They're listed alphabetically. You can see as we scroll down the page, starts at A and goes on and so forth. Um, they're updated frequently, especially sort of the hot topics right now might be updated frequently. When you choose a topic, you know, it can be one of the most challenging parts of the research. Um, I would say, you know, definitely talk with your instructor and select a topic within the parameters set by the assignment. Many times your instructor is going to give you clear guidelines as to what you can and cannot write about. Um, and failure to work within these guidelines might result in your proposed paper being deemed unacceptable by your instructor. So always check with your instructor. But you want to select a topic of personal interest to you and learn more about it. The research for and writing the paper will be more enjoyable if you're writing about something that you find personally interesting. And you want to select a topic for which you can find a manageable amount of information. You could do a preliminary research of the information sources to determine whether existing sources meet your needs. If you find too much information, you can uh, you might need to narrow your topic, or if you find too little, you can broaden your topic. And you know, find something that's interesting uh, to your instructor. They read hundreds of papers every year, so um, on, uh, often on a lot of the same different types of topics. So if you choose something that is interesting to you and your and your instructor, you'll you'll have more fun writing the paper, okay? So let's just talk about this really quickly. Um, the database, let's see, I'm gonna choose, let's see, I'm gonna choose conspiracy theories. When you go into one of the topics, it gives you a brief summary of what conspiracy, I chose conspiracy theories. This will give you a brief summary of what we're going to be talking about. And you can hit more if you need to read further information. Gives you some of the main ideas. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that previous page. Underneath it, it's going to give you different resources with respect to conspiracy theories or whatever the topic might be. So for example, it gives you some academic journals, it gives you some magazines, uh, some statistics, some reference articles, news articles, websites, etc. So basically these things are already kind of vetted with respect to uh, the topic at hand. That's why I was saying earlier, you, you don't wanna come into opposing viewpoints and think, oh, look at that. My teacher wants me to have academic journals and magazines and websites. I've got it all right here. No, don't do that. It'll be obvious and it's just hurting your research to do that. Use this as a place to start, okay? To get yourself familiar with the topic and you can look at some of this stuff just to get an idea if you want to use that topic. And then with respect to how big or small, I mean, conspiracy theories, that's a really big topic. Um, I had a student the other day who said, I want to talk about immigration. And I said, that's great, but um, that's a big topic. So you need to get that down to a smaller chunk of information that you can write about. Okay. So maybe conspiracy theories, I might say, um, well, I want to know about conspiracy theories with respect to uh, America. So it's helpful to formulate the topic that you're interested in into a question. So you might pose the question as, you know, what are the causes of conspiracy theories in America? And by posing your subject as a question, you can more easily identify the main concepts or keywords that you can use in your research. 
okay? Just to sh take you down a little bit more, um, these are the titles of the things that you'll find in the database and they're just listed underneath as well. So these academic journals would be listed here, etc. Okay. And when you're doing your information, you, you know, you want to do a preliminary search of the information um, before you really start in earnest doing your research. Do a preliminary to search whether there's enough information out there and start thinking up keywords and search terms, look in encyclopedias, dictionaries, other sources um, on the internet so that you can get uh, just the right amount of information to put your topic in light so that you know whether you want to continue with it or not. Okay, let's get out of this and we're going to go into ebooks. Go back to the line. Okay. I want to discuss ebooks. And the way you get to ebooks is on the library homepage, we're going to go into databases. And underneath where it says all databases, we have ebooks. We subscribe to about 65,000 ebooks. There's different choices. Here's that opposing viewpoints where we were just at. But I'm going to go into the EBSCO ebook collection. I'm going to use that same topic that I chose in opposing viewpoints because I want that to be the theme for my research today. So I chose conspiracy theories. So I'm going to come in and you can see that's a pretty simple looking interface. It's white and blue and green. I know that I'm in this database because it says in green, I'm in the ebook EBSCO host database. I've got some search boxes here, okay? I'm just gonna start putting in, I'm gonna put in conspiracy theories because that's exactly what it was, the way it was written in the opposing viewpoints database. So I'm going to type that. I'm gonna leave all this field choice alone. I'm just putting in my word or words and I'm gonna hit search because I wanna start broadly and then narrow down my search if I need to. So what do I get? I got seven results, that's not so bad. And again, at this point, I, I might not be certain what I want to write about with respect to conspiracy theories, but here's some ideas. They talk about conspiracy theories in film or television. Um, certainly in politics, um, there's been 9-11 theories. I mean, there's all sorts of conspiracy theories. So you can come in here and get an idea about what you're interested in with respect to the topic. Notice there, now seven is not a bad number to deal with, but I want you to notice on the left side of the page, we have some parameters and filtering abilities that help you refine your results. This is gonna be the same type of um, situation when you're in other databases where you're gonna get a lot more hits on your results. But always in this first box, it's telling me what I did. So it says, Mary, you put in conspiracy theories. Um, we've already by default in this particular database limited the results to full text, which is great. Always keep that check marked, whether you're in the the ebooks or any of the other databases, because the last thing you want to do is see a nice title of an article or a book and you don't have full text checked and then you can't get your hands on that um, full text. So always leave that checked. But just as importantly, you have something um, that's very powerful to help narrow or broaden your results in the books and the articles, and that is the date. Now again, seven results is perfectly fine for me to look through, but if still, if I wasn't interested in going back to 2008, I could either type in the box a year that I wanna go back to, or I could drive, it's more fun to drive the little blue icon down here. You could drag it and I took my hand off the mouse and it automatically said, okay, I brought from seven results, I brought it down to one just by nature of changing the publication date. Okay, and again, that's the same thing that you can do in any of the databases. I'm gonna go back and not do that because I wanna look at those seven books, but okay. So those are the filtering abilities on the left side. When you have the actual book, let's pick this one because it looks interesting. They give you the full text of the book, but unlike the articles, which we'll get to in a moment, because of copyright issues, you can't, download this whole book 
um, and send it to yourself. Okay, you'll be able to do that with articles, but um, they give you the book here, but you won't be able to put it on your desktop or, you know, you know, something like that. But you can click on it. Click on the title. Come on. Is it going to cooperate? It's a little slow today. It's like me. I haven't had coffee yet. Okay. I clicked on the title. It tells me the author. It tells me it's an ebook. It gives me the full text of the book. It um, tells me where it was published. ABC Clio is the name of the publisher. And other information that you're going to need should you cite this book in your research and your works cited page. But just as importantly, I want you to notice something called subjects. I put in conspiracy theories as a search term up in the search box. When you have books and articles, they are indexed by librarians with particular subject terms in the Library of Congress, which was what we use in, in college, right? Library of Congress is our indexing scheme. And at your public library, they use the Dewey Decimal, okay? I put in conspiracy theories. Um, I just used that because opposing viewpoints had it, but also it's just some natural language that I put in here. What the database is gonna do is it's gonna say, okay, I have actual subject terms. You have search terms and subject terms. And subject terms are the ones that are designated by librarians when they index books and articles. And so notice it says conspiracies United States. That sounds exactly like the conspiracy theories I put up here, but then they also have conspiracy theories in a social science. So I just want you to be aware that there are search terms and subject terms. And if I clicked on the subject terms, it's gonna take me into a brand new search. So let's choose, let's just choose this one. Conspiracy theories, or conspiracies in the US. Now I only get one search, one result because clicking on the subject term takes me to a brand new search. And that's gonna be the case in all of the um, databases as well. I'll click on full text just so you can see what it looks like. There it is, there's the book. And it's, you know, of course, hot linked so that if you wanna to go to a particular uh, chapter, shock and upheaval, you can do that, okay? I'm going to get out of ebooks and go into some other databases. So ebooks are a great place to start. Um, you can go back a little bit later on, on a book because it takes a long time to write a book, right? So unlike uh, maybe a, a newspaper article, which you want to have very current in the last five or 10 days or so, and a an, um, scholarly article, which you might go back, you know, six months to five years, a book, you know, you can take it a little bit back a little bit further because it takes so long to write them, right? So I'm gonna go back to the library page and I want to go into the databases. Guys, I highly recommend that you use the databases. Um, why? We all go on Google and search. I do it every day, right? You use Wikipedia, you use all those kind of things and that's fine. But the databases are great because they're free of ads right? You don't get bombarded with a thousand ads when you look up something on Google. They're up to date. You have all the full text here at your fingertips, right? So we pay a lot of money for the databases and they're great to use for your research. So I highly recommend that you use them. And today we're going to look at a few databases. I want to look at um, two databases that help look for scholarly articles. And then we're going to look at a newspaper database. So let's go into all databases. The first one I want to show you is the very first one in the list. And this is a very helpful database to use for just about any research topic you have or any class that you have. There's almost 10,000 full text journals in here. Um, some of them are peer reviewed, some of them are not, but the database goes back really far into the 1800s. It's got a lot of full text and it's just, it's just on all sorts of disciplines. So this is a really handy database to use for just about any class you're taking. So let's jump into this first one, Academic Search Complete. It's going to have um, the similar look and feel as the ebook database because it's from the same publisher, which is EBSCOhost. 
So you'll notice the same interface um, for a lot of the databases. It's very clean. It's very, very easy to use. You can't hurt these databases. Just go in and start searching. Um, and in a minute, you'll see we have our, once we get into the results, you'll see their search or the chat box to find us is on the right side of the page. And there's one right here, ask a librarian. So that if you're in here and you're getting stuck with search terms or something like that, um, and you need help, we're there to help you. So I'm in academic search complete. It tells me that right at the top. I do have a lot of my tools underneath here that will help me uh, change my results. I'm not gonna do any of that right away. When I search, I like to come right into the search boxes and just start, it's like throwing spaghetti at the wall. I wanna just see what sticks. Um, I already did this search last night, so I have conspiracy theories. I wanna search that again. Now, I'm not gonna put in America or anything like that. I just wanna put in conspiracy theories and see what I get. So I'm gonna hit search. And you'll notice all of that information that was below that was for helping uh, refine my results, it all then swings to the left. So you can start scrolling down and you'll see um, the date and the full text and a lot of other things that we'll talk about in a moment. But always it has in the top left, the box here, it always tells you what you're doing. So I have conspiracy theories, Again, the system automatically defaults to full text for me, so I don't have to worry about that. By putting in conspiracy theories, I actually, that's not a horrible number. Um, if I put in something like immigration, I probably would have gotten you know tens of thousands of results, but happily, um, I got something that doesn't quite make my head explode. Um, although this is still way too big of a number to deal with, right? Almost 4,000 results, that's way too much. So how do I start? limiting that down. Well, depending on what my topic is, if I already know that I want to focus on America, I could come in here and say um, United States, and I'm anding that with the conspiracy theory. So I wanna say to the system, I want all the results to come back. And instead of just being on conspiracy theories, I've now put United States in here and I need all the articles to have both of those concepts. So let's hit search and see what happens. Okay, so see that took out a lot of results. It went from 3,700 down to 1,312. So just with one, um, one piece of information, I got the system to give me something more manageable, but still that's way too many. So I'm gonna scroll down and I could have put film or you know whatever, and maybe I don't know yet what I want to talk about with respect to conspiracy theories. Let's keep scrolling. We have our full text checked, yay. We have scholarly peer-reviewed journals. Let's talk really briefly about what that means. Your instructor is going to probably all say, <laughs> you need to have scholarly or academic or peer-reviewed journals. For our purposes, those are all kind of the same. And so I could come and click on that and it, the system would give me only scholarly journals. Before we do that, I want, I want you to notice something. Let's see if it does it on this page. That's not, bear with me a moment. I'm gonna go back to my original search because I want to show you if it's going to give me something. Well, we'll get there. What I wanted to show you was when you start to see your results, you'll see this little graphic. This one says periodical. A periodical is not an academic journal. An academic journal is something, what that means is the people who write and put articles in academic journals, they have to have their article vetted by other peers who are in that same discipline. So before I write my conspiracy theory article and put it into conspiracy journal um, quarterly, my peers have to read that and vet it and make sure I know what I'm talking about before they'll enter my article into their journal. But when you have something like magazines, People Magazine, Time Magazine, right, those are not considered academic journals. You might be able to use them in your project but it's very different than using something scholarly. So when you see periodical in the databases, what that means is these are not 
academic. I'm going to click on scholarly journals and the system's going to show you. See how the graphic now says academic journal? That's what I was trying to show you before. It'll say either periodical or academic journal. Now I know that the 471 articles I'm looking at are all academic in nature. So now I'm down to 471. I could continue to filter these results. Maybe I don't want to go back to 1939. Um, I can drive my icon because it's fun to do. Um, with journal articles, you might only go back, you know, five to 10 years or so. Let's just go back 10. And I brought it down to 312. So you get the idea you can keep filtering down with just a few clicks with making them scholarly, changing the date. But let's go down a little bit more. I have 312 results. If I scroll down, we have a couple things that are very powerful. One is called subject thesaurus and the other one is called subject. I wouldn't go into thesaurus because it's just going to broaden your search because it's going to take what you entered into the search box and find like as terms. Instead, I'm going to click on subject. What this will do, and I'm going to hit show more. What this will do is it'll tell me the, the 371 results I have, these are the subjects for the hits that we found. So it starts with the most hits conspiracy theory. So that actually is a subject term. And there's 18 results in that 371 on conspiracy theories. There's United States, um, Barack Obama, anti-vaccination, which is probably very top, uh, topical right now, um, so on and so forth. So I could scroll down and see, as it, you know, again, if I wasn't set on a topic yet, I could come down and scroll and get an idea with respect to um, some of the conspiracy theories. Here's one on 9-11, et cetera. So this gives you a list of all the hits. And maybe I just want to look at conspiracy theories in America. I could choose those two things, hit update. And now I have 25 articles. That's really manageable for me to deal with. Before you start reading your articles, what you want to do is read the abstract. There's two ways to find out what an abstract is. You can either click on the title and go right into, say you like the title, you can click on that. Before you start reading the full text article, which is 14 pages, because you don't have the time to do that, unless the article is worth your time and it's on point with respect to your topic, you don't have time to read the article. So what you want to do is read the abstract. This is a paragraph summary of what the author, the author wrote this, this is what he or she thinks is the most pertinent information that you're going to find in the full text. So before you read those 14 pages, look at the abstract and decide if it's worth your time. If it is, you could save this to a folder and go, you know, keep finding more articles because I suggested you look for a few articles first and then come back later and try to read them. You could add that to your folder and come back and, and look at it later. Another way to look at that abstract without clicking on the uh, title like I did is to mouse over this little icon with the magnifying glass. You don't click on it, you just mouse over it. And look what happens. That abstract pops up. Okay. Um, the other information that's here is it gives you the authors, it gives you the journal it came from, when it was published, that it's an academic journal, the subjects. There's a lot of information right here to help you decide whether or not you might want to use this. Okay, If you decide, I don't like the abstract, you could remove it from your folder. But what I like to do is, and notice how that went from blue to yellow because I added that title to my folder. I'm going to go down, uh, say my instructor's like, Mary, you have to find three articles. So I'm going to look for maybe six or 10 articles because again, I might change directions. So I'm going to look at the title. Oh, that's interesting. Let me look at the abstract. I'm going to mouse over it, read it. Now, this is interesting. I might want to read this later, add it to the folder and so on and so forth. Um, 
Let's see, let's just do one more. Oh, UFOs, that's a fun conspiracy. Let's see, let's mouse over. I read the abstract, da, da, da. yeah, that's interesting, I might. So I'm gonna add it to my folder. So later, when I've taken my break and now I'm gonna come back to start reading this stuff for comprehension, I could come up to this folder. If I wanted to email it to myself, I can, I'll show you how to do that. But look, here are the three articles that I chose to do a deep dive into to start reading for comprehension and assimilate the information, okay? I have access to the full text. Let's click that. You have an HTML or PDF in some cases, and there's the whole PDF right there for you, okay? Um, I can download it, unlike the books where we couldn't. Let me get out of this. I just wanna go and show you a few more things. Okay, on the right side of the page, you have a few more tools. You can email things to yourself. You can email these three articles to yourself. When you come in, you don't have to use your SMC email address if you don't want to. You can use your personal one or whatever. Um, but I caution you to leave it in the rich text format so you can just put your, you know, email, da da da, SMC or whatever. Um, leave the rich text alone. But what's really cool is over here on the right side, you have citation format. When you click on that, you can go and find either APA or MLA. Typically, it's going to be MLA for your English classes and click that and send it to yourself. I want to caution you in any of the databases, a robot is basically automating the citations for you. You have to fix them before you look at them. Let me give you an example. Um, Let's look at this article. Is it going to give me? Okay, a little slow today. So there's again the full text. Over on the right side, I have something called Cite. Oh, by the way, you can add it to your Google Drive if you want as well. But you have something called Cite. When you click on that, you're going to get options, alphabetical options for, again, APA, Chicago, whatever. We'll go to MLA. And here is the way. If you ended up using this article, here's the way they cite the article. Again, you can copy that and put it on your works cited page, but you have to fix it because I guarantee that almost nine times out of 10, there's going to be um, a period out of place or things will be in all caps and all sorts of other mistakes. So grab it, but fix it in your paper, okay? Let me get out of this. This was, um, academic search. I can do a new search if I wanted to, but what I want to do is get out of here. I, I have a few minutes left. I want to show you two more databases really quickly. One of them is called JSTOR. And I'm back on the library page in the list of databases. When you look at JSTOR, this is only searching scholarly academic peer-reviewed journals in a wide variety of disciplines. So when you go in here, you're not gonna find People Magazine. You're not gonna find um, LA Times. You're going to find only scholarly journals. So you're safe to search this when your instructor says you need scholarly journals. You can come in here and look. Another reason I wanted to show you this database is because it's from a different um, publisher, okay? So it has a little bit different look and feel um, than the EBSCO databases did. But the concepts are still the same. You have search boxes and you have the ability to um, change the results of what you find. So let's come in and put in good old conspiracy theories. Um, it's a little bit more wieldy, but I'm gonna put in conspiracy theories. I'm not gonna put in US yet. I'm just gonna hit, well, before I hit advanced search, forgive me, I wanna hit articles because there are different types of things in here, like reviews, um, books, et cetera, but I'm looking for articles. So I'm gonna click articles. And one more thing I want to do, I personally wish I spoke other languages, but I don't. I'm gonna choose English because I know that I'm going to write my paper in English and my instructor will be able to read that paper in English. So if I wanted to do the publication date, I could, but I'm gonna just start with those few things first and hit search. And let's see what we get. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. That's a lot of results. Um, that's sort of shocking. So that's too much for me to deal with. So here's where I could have 
done a few things. I could go right into changing the date, but I think, I think I'm going to go into um, my search and put conspiracy theories. And let's just do um, United States, I think, because that's what I've been sort of doing. Okay. And again, articles, and I'm going to pick English. And before I do the date, let's just see what it gives us. It's probably going to give us a lot. Okay, well, it took about 10,000 off by just putting United States, so that's interesting. So I bet if I come down here and do something with the publication date, I'm going to change that a lot. Um, you know, it doesn't give me that little fun thing to drive, so I'm just going to manually say, let's go back to 2015 to 2021 and apply it. Okay, wow. I mean, look how many results. That's still a lot, but that took off tens of thousands of results. So you get the idea, okay? Um, I wanna go a little bit further. Before when we were in the EBSCO database in Academic Search Premier, remember on the left, I said there were subject terms and you could click on the different subject terms to narrow your focus. You can do that in JSTOR, but there's one difference. When you look at the subjects here, these are the subjects of the disciplines of the journals themselves, okay? So it's not using the subject terms like we did when we put in conspiracy theories in the United States. They are subjects, but it's with respect to the type of journal that these articles are written in. So it's a little bit different. So I still could use it. I could come in and say, um, oh, let's see what the criminal, Criminology and criminal justice. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that, and I'll maybe I'll hit the cultural studies as well. Whatever you click on is gonna bring down the results again. Okay, 34 is a lot more, a uh, lot easier for me to deal with. And then you have some other utility tools like the ability to download it or save it. Um, you can you can cite it right, and you can come in and find your MLA or APA citation. Just fix them. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of the same kind of tools um, that you would use in any of the other databases, okay? I think one, two, uh, one difference too is, let's, let's, pick on, um, let's pick on a article here. I believe that when you're in, yeah, in JSTOR, remember I said in other databases you could send yourself the um, article to read later? I would probably try to do that again because when you download the PDF, it's gonna, ask for all this stuff. If you don't download the PDF, sorry, and you click on the title, it's going to give you a page at a time. Okay. Um, so it's probably a little bit easier to download it and look at the article that way versus looking at it inside this particular database. Okay. Um, so again, that's JSTOR. Um, all the tools are the same. It's just a different, different slant and it's all scholarly. I want to do one more quick database, close some of this stuff. I'm back on the library page, on the database page, and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. Because what I want you to see is something called US News Stream. This is one of our newspaper sites, and more than likely your instructors will want you to have newspaper sources in your articles. This particular database searches local regional, national news. Okay, so this is just the United States. It's got some of the big ones like the LA Times, the New York Times, Washington Post, etc. Okay, we'll click on that. And yet again, we're going to have a different publisher. This time it's ProQuest. So it has um, a different look and feel, but the utility is still the same. You have your search boxes, you have the ability to um, tie concepts together. I want conspiracy theories and United States. So let's start doing that. And what's nice about this database too is, if you can't spell like me today, look how I'm typing and look how it's popping up different things. I mean, that's, you can turn that off if you want to, but um, you can come in here and you know, maybe I was talking about 9-11 and I want to click on conspiracy theories. I'm not going to, but I just want you to see that it, it kind of helps you pick, pick something that you're interested in. I knew from before that we were trying to do United States, so I'm just going to keep that and uh, type that in. United States. Okay, 
So I've got my conspiracy theories concept and the United States. Now, unlike the other databases, this one makes me tell it I want full text. So just be aware of that. You've got to tell it you want that. Remember earlier we were talking about newspapers and of course a newspaper is daily, right? Most of the time. So in terms of publication dates, you might only want to go back a few days versus several years because I guarantee you're going to get a lot of hits, a lot of results if you don't. And that's the whole nature of using a newspaper anyway. It's got the most current up-to-date information. Um, so you might only want to go back. Let's just see what happens if we don't do that. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm going to hit search and see how many results I get. Okay. Um, now, I always make the mis this mistake in this database. My eye goes right to the 20, and I think, oh, 20, that's easy. No, it's <laughs> it's over here on the left. They kind of put it over here out of your face. So 65,000 results, that's, that's actually a little bit more in lines of what I was thinking. So um, again, now all of those um, search capabilities, search tools have swung over to the left. So I can say, huh, what do we got here? It actually gives me some magazines and newspapers and other trade journals and other different types of sources. I can click more to see what they give me. But in this case, I just want newspapers. I'm going to click that. So just with one click, I've taken it from those almost 66,000 results down to 30,000. Still a lot, but you get what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling and here they have um, a date range thing again. I don't want to go back to 1969 um, about conspiracy theories, so I'm going to do my little driving thing and yeah, let's just go to, uh, let's go a little bit back here and see what happens. Um, I drive the little date parameter and I'm going to hit update and let's see what it does for us. Oh man, it only took us to 20,000. Okay, so I might go in and enter a date, a date range because I, I don't want to go back and have that many results. Um, maybe we'll just go back, you know, January 4th of this year and we'll just go to, uh, what is today, the 10th? We'll just do that and update. Okay, and so, okay, we still get a lot of results. I think there's a lot of conspiracy theory talk going on right now. If you keep scrolling, you can also say, you know, I'm only interested in a particular news source. So if you click on publication title and hit more, it's going to give you a list of the hit count within the different newspapers. So maybe I'm only interested in the New York Times and I see they have 229 results here. I could include that and hit apply. And then I'll just get those 229 results, okay? So always use your tools on the left side and they even have a subject. If you click on the subject, it's going to give you a list of the different terms that they have indexed the papers with, okay? So you could come in and look at those if you were interested. And then we have other tools just like before. We have the ability to uh, email this to yourself or cite it. Here's the way to send the results to yourself. Here's the little, this little uh, quotation Mark is the way to cite something. So let's click on a topic and look. They give you the full text. Now, um, they because they write these so quickly, a lot of times it's gonna just be thrown right into the database. Um, you could print it, you could save it as a PDF, but it kind of has a different look because it's written that way. One thing I like to do also is um, I have my terms highlighted. I like to turn that off because it just bothers me. You can turn on the highlighting on and off and it'll obviously highlight all the terms that you've put in there. So see that goes away, which is a little bit nicer for me. Um, but you can save it, you can email it. Same thing when you cite it, um, you have to come in and choose. Well, there's a lot here. Now MLA is currently in the eighth edition, not the seventh. So you can drive it all the way up to what it'll tell you. Um, but if your instructor wants you to use MLA 8th, you better, you better fix this because there are differences um, in the citations. Okay. So I'm going to get out of this for a minute and turn myself back on and stop sharing. There's me. Whoa, went too big. 
Um, so wrapping up, so today I have shown you opposing viewpoints to try to figure out how to pick a topic and narrow it. Uh, we've looked at ebooks, we've looked at um, articles, scholarly journals, uh, magazine articles, newspaper articles. Um, basically with research, it's just you, you keep doing it until you find what you, what you have and helps you write your paper. And always talk to your instructor, always talk to a librarian, use those chat features. We're here to help you 24 seven. And um, it's fun. Uh, try to make your research fun. It can seem intimidating when you get all of this um, stuff that you have to do and cite it this way and do it, but find something that's interesting to you and, and enjoy it. So I hope this was helpful. Um, there